Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Archie Reason Digital, where we create photorealistic assets together. In today's video, I want to show you how to art direct your asset when it's not the real object and also you don't have a concept for it. I have demonstrated some of the techniques in my photorealistic fantasy asset video. In this one, I want to go a little bit more in depth on how I created this real time asset. The asset I'm going to use to demonstrate in today's video is actually type of a choker necklace thing for the character I'm currently working on. To create something that doesn't exist, we need some good planning. Here is my thinking process. First, I need to know all the decisions I need to make. First one is what are the elements I want on this asset? And then what is the material quality of each element? And what are the colors of the elements? I want to art direct this asset in Substance Painter. So the setup needs to be flexible. I need to be able to change each element, material quality, and color anytime I want. So here are all the things I decide on. For the elements, I want a main body material. I want a grunge in the AO cavity area, and I want an edge material. For the color, I want the main body to be dark blue-green mix, the cavity dark or lighter brown, and uh, the edge to be shiny golden. For the material, the main body to be sort of a porcelain material. Um, the cavity is matte and heavy, and the edge is metallic. There are some additional things that I want. I want to have some fine bump, and also I want a good range of uh, scale in terms of surface detail. Here are the references I collected to visually demonstrate all the elements I need. I also make notes on every picture of exactly what I like about it. You want to make the idea as clear as possible on paper. So when you actually start the texturing process, you have a clear image in your head of what you try to achieve. After first pass of sculpting, I threw the geometry quickly in substance and threw some basic material that I wanted on top just to check if the geometry can cut it and I actually end up really not liking this one. The detail on this are in general a little too big and really makes this look like a toy. So I went back to sculpting and uh, added a lot more smaller detail on this. This version is much better. So I swapped the base geometry and rebaked the maps. And this is the new version that I have. The setup is pretty simple. The base blue is the main material. And I have a brownish color for the grunge and also a metallic yellow edge material. Right now, everything is just a flat color to show me how the geometry is going to work. Now I'm going to start to collect textures to try to make the material look more interesting. I really like how the texture looks on this little porcelain statue, so I'm going to try to copy that. I feel like sometimes porcelain material is a little bit translucent, a little bit looks like skin. So here I'm going to try to use a cow skin material to mimic that look. I think some stone or rock material can work as well, but here I just want to experiment with this one. This tree image is my main inspiration for color mix. So I'm going to try to extract color from the image and create different shades of uh, texture. Here are all the color I extracted. We're almost like mixing paint here for oil painting, if you want to think about it that way. Now I'm going to start to plug the texture into my fill layers and see how the texture works. I have two 4K UDIM for this asset. So make sure you always use tri planner for your fill layer. I'm just rotating around, adjust tiling, adjust direction to get a result that I like. Gonna do the same thing for the edge material. Because this material is metallic, I need a colored texture for the metallic slot. For any of the color, we can always add HSV fill layer to adjust them later. Now we're going to move on to the AO cavity grunge material. The color is pretty strong right now, but we can adjust it later. I also created a different roughness map for three different kinds of main material I have on this. The darkest one is for the metallic golden edge, and the grunge material, and the porcelain material. I adjusted the level according to the flat color I had it on before. I feel like the edge is covering way too many surfaces, so I'm going to reduce a little bit. 
By the way, everything is instanced across all UDIM at the moment, so any adjustment I do on one UDIM will affect the rest. I'm also starting to adjust the color of the edge as well. For asset like this, it's all about trying things. I had a rough idea in my head of what I want to look like. But once we start texturing, we're going to really see what it looks like in front of us. This is where we need to rely on our artistic sense to make it look better. I'm starting to tweak every element to see what works. Now we have a pretty saturated blue and pretty saturated red. They're a little bit of a complementary color, so if they're both really strong, it's going to look less pleasing. I will keep adjusting this until the end. I'm starting to add other color elements into the paint. The most color variation we're going to have is in the main material, so I'm just going to focus on that. Every new color is just a new fill layer that only affects the color. After I added everything, I will also put a mask on every one of them and start to mix them. One thing we'll have to stop doing from here now is the instance feature. We cannot paint across UDIM at the moment, so we will have to duplicate the entire setup from one UDIM to the rest. So we can actually hand paint on every one of them. I decided to put the dark blue color on the bottom and start to put the lighter blue on top. Here I'm mostly just trying things. I don't really have a super clear idea how I want the light blue distribution to be. I'm just going to paint and change it as I go. This is the time for you to be artistic and creative. I'm going to keep working on this for a little bit and show you what I have in the end. After some painting, this is what I have. Besides the light green bluish color, I also added another brighter green color for the edge. After that, I turned on other two materials that I have and start to refine the paint a little bit more. Because we're trying to mimic a porcelain, which have this very soft color transition, our brush stroke doesn't have to be super precise. Here I'm also starting to add a little bit of a pinkish yellow color into the green. Adding a little bit of a complementary color is going to make things more interesting. I'm also going to start to add another shade of red into the grunge area so it's not too flat and boring. Because in the end, I decided to have the main body material a little bit more saturated green. So the cavity grunge, I decided to have it more desaturated. I figured just adding a little bit dash of uh, bright red uh, in places can make it look uh, complicated and cool. I'm going to start to do some eye render just to see what it looks like right now. Right now, we're in the observing stage. Keep checking it from different direction and try to think what else we can do to make it better. By the way, I'm not using SSS for this. Um, if it sort of looks translucent, it's just effect of the mixed paint. After some rendering, I realized that I'm lacking that fine bump element. The current bump I have is from the sculpting and it's a little too big. I'm starting to test out some different normal maps and see which one will add that fine uh, breakup that I needed. I finally found one that I like and I think it totally makes the entire object look higher resolution. I'm going to do the same for the grunge cavity area. Right now it's looking a little too flat. I'm just adding fill layers that only affect normal map. After trying out a few different normal maps, I think I'm happy with what it looks like now. By the way, all the tileable texture I got for this tutorial is all from Megascan. I think I will stop right here and just focus on rendering now. I hope this tutorial is helpful. If you have any questions and concerns, please leave a comment down below. I really enjoy making this tutorial, so please let me know if you guys enjoy this type of content. I will see you in the next one.